All right, on the another edition of the Franklin Community High School um, Career Exploration Project, we have with us today Ryan Skirvin. Uh, he is the Software Practice Manager for Kronos, Inc. Uh, Ryan, thank you for joining us. Sure thing. You bet. Um, so first of all, just kind of Software Practice Manager. Tell us what that entails, what that's about, and kind of how you got there. Yeah, so I know that's a pretty general term. I um, might not be able to gather what I do from that. So basically, I manage cons a group of con <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> consultants and project managers that implement our software. So some of you kids may have actually used Kronos. You know, it's very popular within the restaurants. Um, you know, pr pretty much everyone can use it. It's called human capital management software which means we have time and labor management, uh, HR, and then payroll. So any type of company that has a, an employee base can use it. Um, so anyway, so I manage that group. I have 14 people that report directly into me, and I just manage um, the implementations that we get new customer. When new customer purchases our software, um, it'll come to us, and I put a team in place to implement the software. So my job is just to manage the overall piece of that. So I manage the people, and I manage the implementations as well. Um, so a lot of different, uh, minor duties and tasks, but you know, the more general piece of what I do is just manage in an employee base and the software implementation. Okay. So how did you, like, what, how did you get to that position as far as what were some other roles that you've held that have helped you out with that? Yep. So graduated from Franklin college in 2004 with, uh, Brian Powers. Um, he was one of my mentors. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, couldn't find a job out of school. Um, just kind of looking around, um, working my college job at the time. And then actually another friend, John Buck, who also went to Franklin College with us, reached out to me about a software support opening. This is in 2007. Um, my major was computer information systems, so it aligned with what I did in college. So took, got that job, was on the software support desk for three or four years. Then from there, got promoted into a team lead position. Um, did that for about a year and a half. They got promoted to actual manager of the support uh, piece of that software. From there, uh, I spent 10 years with that first company, um, moved into actually managing professional services and support. Um, and then I started managing uh, acquisitions. Um, then in 2017, I got a recruiter reached out to me at Kronos, wanting me to manage their professional services group um, software implementation. So I, I took that position and uh, I have been with Kronos ever since, so almost four years now. So what led you, you said you meant you, you majored in, um, in IT at, uh, as, at Franklin College. Was that what it was called at Franklin or what? No, computer information systems. So it's actually not IT, it's all software based. Okay. So ironically enough, it's, uh, it, the, the, the curriculum has probably changed a ton since then. I mean, we're talking 20 years ago. Um, but we actually learned how to implement software and that's what I do now. And that, that's very ironic and very coincidence, coincidental because I honestly had no interest in this when I was an 18, 19 year old kid. Right. Um, so the fact that I'm doing this now is pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it completely aligns with what I went to college for, which probably less than 20% of people could probably say that. So, yeah. I can at this very moment when we're yeah. interviewing and that's it. Um, <laughs> so what, so what led you into, into the, the, uh, the support system? Well, so like, wh what do you mean support system? I mean the, com the information, the computer. Oh, information. okay. I gotcha. Um, so I, uh, I went to college not knowing what I wanted to do. Um, spent two years going back and forth, back and forth from going into general business, teaching, um, it, you name it, I thought about it. And then I went to a seminar second semester, my sophomore year that talked about computers. And I mean, I'll be completely frank. They talked about how much money you can make. So I said, all right, sign me up. So that's when I chose my major sophomore year or uh, second semester of my sophomore year. Um, and then the rest is history. I, you know, I, I, you know, started from there. Um, it took me four and a half years to finish cause I got such a late start. Um, and yeah, then I just fell into the job. I mean, you know, what, what kids that are currently in high school need to know is a lot of this is chance. A lot of this is luck. A lot of this is who, you know, right. um, it's, you know, you, you, you get, you get this mindset of what you want to do when you're 17 years old and, you know, it, 
it's hard for it to actually pan out that way because a lot of things have to fall into place. So, you know, you can have a great career and be something you never even dreamed you thought you're going to do, but it could just happen. So, you know, that's a good piece of advice is just don't get too worked up or too, you know, worried about the way your career goes because if the, if the drop of a diamond can shift gears and, you know, move in a different direction. So just be patient. And it probably will. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Yeah, it will. Right. Um, uh, yeah, so I, when, when I, you know, when I was younger, I, there's no way I, I never dreamed I'm in the position I'm in now. So, um, again, just, I think a lot of people can say that too, you know, things don't typically pan out the way you think. And that's probably a good thing. Um, cause that's life, you know? So, um, so, so with your job, uh, what are some of the pros and the cons, some of the things you like and don't like about it? Yeah. So the pros is uh, working in a, a software company. It's, um, I think the right term to use We're very, um, hip, I guess I could say we keep up with the, t you know, we're, we're very cognizant of our employee base and that they're younger. Um, so it's a very, very laid back atmosphere, work from home, uh, unlimited PTO, great benefits, you know, laid back management staff, you know, so it's not what you might envision of like a typical, um, corporate workspace, you know, it's, we're not wearing suits. We're not sitting in cubes, you know, it's a very, very, very laid back atmosphere with a lot of flexibility. Um, you know, you can pretty much work any hours. Um, so that's definitely the pro. Um, and I think you'll find that consistently across any of the software, uh, companies here in Indianapolis, Salesforce, um, you name it, you know, so, uh, con, um, it can be a bit stressful at times. Um, you know, we're implementing software for big corporations that have invested a lot of money into it. So if something doesn't happen to go right, that's a big deal. Um, as I mentioned before, we do time and labor, HR payroll. If customers don't get paid and it's our fault, that's a big deal. Um, I'm the first person that has to deal with that. Um, so that's, you know, hey, that's part of the job. And I know that. But um, yeah, when that gets thrown in your lap all of a sudden and you have to deal with a crisis, that that can be a bit uh, stressful and, you know, not fun. But anyway, yeah. Okay. So as far as personality and, and the job itself, wh what do you think a person and their personality would have to be like to be successful in this job? And then if someone has, you know, personality or doesn't like something, uh, what do you think I guess what would who would be good in this job and who would not be good in this job? Yeah, uh, that's a tough question to answer. I don't really know that there's someone that would, you know, I can specifically pinpoint something that would not be good in this job. You know, I mean, obviously you have to be okay talking to people, uh, dealing with people because, you know, we're in the customer service industry. So, you know, obviously that, that that's, that's big. Um, you've got to be organized. Um, in terms of personality, you know, we have introverts, we have extroverts. Um, you know, I, I, I can't really pinpoint that. I would say uh, anyone really, any type of person could could do this role. Um, so, you know, I don't think if someone was worried about they might not have the right type of personality for this, I would say don't think that way because, you know, I do a lot of interviewing, a lot of hiring, and there we don't ever pigeonhole into we need this type of person. It's It's more about you know, looking at, at each individual individually and see what they can bring to the table. So, yeah, it's, it's, you know, there, there's nothing that would limit you to doing this job. Okay. Long story short. Yeah. So how would someone prepare for, you know, a career in, in this, in the, the software field? Yeah. So there's a, there's a few ways you can go. Um, you know, it, it, I know it's tough to get experience and that may be something that someone, you know, a high school or college kid may find intimidating is that jobs always require experience. Um, but there are lots of different roles you can do prior to coming into this. So we, you have to have implementation experiments experience. So you need to implement something in the past, um, you know, experience with the software. So if you've used it, you work in a place that uses it, that's always great as well. Um, but I mean, it, you know, these are entry level positions. So, you don't necessarily have to have X, Y, and Z to, uh, to, to do this role. Um, so, you know, like I mentioned before, you gotta be very organized. You have to like a go-getter attitude, willing to learn. Those are the more important pieces as to, you know, what you have on your resume. Um, but, you know, having some type of relevant experience that translates into this role is always a huge plus. I mean, that's going to help you, you know, 
hugely immensely. So any specific classes you could think of that someone maybe in high school would take that would be that would be helpful? Um, yeah, just like so key, whatever they call now keyboarding when I was never did on a typewriter. Um, I'm sure they do it on computers now, but that that's that's key. I mean, you do a lot of you got to be quick, um, take notes and that kind of thing. So definitely um, whatever they call now typing. Yeah, um, for sure. The uh, office class that teaches you Excel, Word, PowerPoint, uh, Access. I mean, we use PowerPoint and Excel religiously. Um, so, you know, and that, that could probably translate to any position, you know. Um, so so there, anything like technology related is going to help you a ton. Um, maybe public speaking, because you do you do have to speak to people, lots of different types of people in this role. Um, but yeah, I would say for sure, anything that is related to technology or computers is going to be a big plus. Okay. And then last, just what's some general advice you have for um, for high school students? Just if you could think back to when uh, when young Ryan Skirvin was a 16, 17 year old high school senior, you know, what would you have liked to have known? So I hit on this before, but uh, that don't be uh, intimidated if you don't know what you want to do. Um, I and mean, if you do know what you want to do, um, know that, that it might not pan out that way. So again, life throws you tons of curveballs. I know that's a stupid cliche, but it's very true. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be a firefighter for many years and now I'm in the corporate world. You know, I mean, so this happens to lots of people. Many people I talked to, a lot of my friends, none of them, you know, intended to go down the path they were on. So uh, just don't be, you know, don't be worried. Don't, don't fret if, you know, you don't get that one job you wanted or, you know, if something doesn't pan out the way you thought because, you know, it can lead down a different path and it could be a very positive one. Okay. Well, hey, thank you, Ryan, for uh, for joining us here today. And once again, Ryan Skirvin, who's the software practice manager at Kronos Incorporated. Um, he works in, in Indianapolis. Uh, early shoot, did work in Indianapolis. I mean, you still work in Indianapolis, but you work from my home now. Yeah, yeah, we do have a big office downtown, Indy. You'll see you'll see Kronos plaster on the side of our building if you're ever down there. So that's typically where I work if we're not in a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Ryan, and uh, you have a good day. Thanks. You too.